Sean Mendez, first time on the channel. Well done, Sean, you have reached the pinnacle of your career and the dizzy heights of Therapist Reacts. Let's see what you got. If you're new here, there's some more info about me in the description below, plus details of how to request reactions. Cutting down my intros, let's get into it. Help me, it's like the walls are caving in. Sometimes I feel like giving up, but I just can't. It isn't in my blood. Laying on the bathroom floor, feeling nothing. I'm overwhelmed and insecure. Give me something I could take to ease my mind slowly. Just have a drink and you'll feel better. Safety behavior. Just take her home and you'll feel better. Safety behavior, coping strategy. Keep telling me that it gets better. Reassurance. Does it ever? So, just this. This feels quite intimate, doesn't it? This so far quite a minimalist video. We're just focusing focusing on him and his experience. I like it. Just take her home and you'll feel better. Keep telling me that it gets better. Does it ever help me? It's like the walls are keeping in. Sometimes I feel like giving up No medicine is strong enough Someone help me I'm crawling in my skin Sometimes I feel like giving up But I just can't It isn't in my blood It isn't Again. Okay, so everything coming crashing down and he's not feeling enough to even get out of the way and just letting it fall. Is that that part or is it more of a everything's crashing down, but I'm not going to try to get out of the way. I'm accepting of it crashing down. It's not in my blood to kind of run away from this. Which one is it? Possibly the former given the content so far. Not 100% sure. Um, in terms of the lyrics, what have we got so far? Laying on my bathroom floor, feeling nothing. I'm overwhelmed and insecure. Give me something I could take to ease my mind slowly. So a bit of kind of mixed experiences there. Feeling nothing, but at the same time, feeling overwhelmed. And if you've never experienced something like this before, it might sound a little bit confusing. You know, how can you feel nothing and overwhelmed at the same time. Now, intellectually, it doesn't make sense, but that this is what happens. This is what we tend to see. This is what it's like for people. When you are overwhelmed, usually you have racing thoughts. Um, the thoughts might not be making much sense to you. They're hard to slow down. Your body can be going through a fight or flight response. So you get the heart rate increase, you get the breathing increase, you get that kind of irritable and fidgety feeling maybe you get some sweat or it can go the other way you can get the freeze response which is a bit like a collapse response where everything feels like it's shutting down both signs of feeling overwhelmed and to protect from all of that so the racing thoughts of fight or flight and the kind of freeze response, the collapse response are both, both mean that you are being overwhelmed. And what happens is to protect you from all of that, your brain kind of says, let's just try to feel nothing. Let's block it all out. Block out every emotion or feeling. Let's protect ourselves. Let's protect the body, let's protect the mind, let's just protect us because feeling this way absolutely sucks. It's better just to feel nothing at all. And then there's loads of other ways the brain is trying to get rid of these kind of unpleasant, unwanted feelings. And Sean names a few of these. Have a drink and you'll feel better. Take a home and you'll feel better. They are always of distracting. They are always of trying to get rid of an experience and all of them make sense you know why wouldn't you want to get rid of something that is unpleasant 
keep telling me that it gets better. That is reassurance seeking. That is a classic strategy used with people who worry a lot or don't like uncertainty. So in therapy, particularly CBT, we have this idea of intolerance of uncertainty. People don't like uncertainty. It, it, they don't like the feeling that comes with it and the experience that comes with it. So if we think of that phrase, intolerance of uncertainty, what people try to do is increase the certainty. And they do that by reassurance seeking. Where it's better if people can increase their tolerance to uncertainty. So if this is an equation, they're kind of targeting the wrong side. They're trying to increase certainty not touching the tolerance where it's better longer term to try to increase your tolerance to being uncertain because there's a load of things in life that bring uncertainty with it. So everything that Sean is saying here makes sense. It makes sense with the literature. It makes sense with anecdotal reports. It makes sense with what I see in my clinical practice. It fits with my own experiences of what happens to me when I get overwhelmed. Right, I feel like I talked a lot there. Possibly too much as usual. But I just can't, it isn't in my blood. So two things that are going through my mind right now. First of all, I'm looking through my phone feeling anxious. The social media is wrecking people's mental health these days. Judgment about yourself by others, comparing yourself to others, the psychological manipulation that tech companies use to kind of poke fear and anger at us to keep us on the platforms longer for ad money, you know, how we're being manipulated or even using social media as a distraction from our actual in-the-moment experiences. Want to procrastinate from something that needs doing because it feels a bit unpleasant and uncomfortable? Well, scroll TikTok or YouTube Shorts or Instagram for a few hours and don't get anything done. And then realize you haven't got anything done, so you feel guilty about that, but you don't know how to handle feeling guilty because that in itself is a really unpleasant emotion to feel. So you go back to your strategy of scrolling and you get caught in that loop. Same with sleep, can't sleep, have a quick scroll, get engaged um, in kind of what you're looking at, loads of light, and definitely don't get back to sleep. Tech and social media has its place, but I commonly see people using it wrong, using it as a safety behavior, using it as distraction, using it as a bit of a kind of addictive behavior, rant over about social media. But I also notice in this that Sean says something like, um, anxious looking at my phone, I don't want to be alone again. So he's, he's, it sounds like he's worried about looking at his phone and no one's tried to contact him. So he is afraid of being alone, no one reaching out to see how he is, that kind of connection with other people. So, you know, the swings and roundabouts for social media, use it wisely, it can be, be a really good thing um, in terms of connecting with people. He obviously has this fear that he's he's alone and no one's supporting him through this. And then he goes, he says, it's like the walls are caving in. You know, he's feeling trapped. The situation is getting more and more confined with less ways to get out. I'm crawling in my skin. Like the, like the feeling he is experiencing is so unpleasant. He wants to break out of his own body. It doesn't even feel like it's his body anymore. You know, it's like he's so uncomfortable in it. It feels alien to him, like it's not really his. And that in itself 
just feeds into that cycle of of just uh, that kind of unpleasant feeling. Sometimes I feel like giving up, but I just can't. It isn't in my blood. It isn't in my blood. I need somebody now. I need somebody now. Someone to help me out. I need somebody now. Help me. The way he's shouting that. I need somebody now, someone to help me out. You just want to jump into the screen, dive into the video and, and just help him out. Just give him something, just be there with him. Now you don't have to fix his problem. You don't have to solve anything for him. You just need to just be there, just sit with him throughout the experience. You don't even have to say anything, most likely. like the walls are caving in sometimes i feel like giving up but i just can't I, I love this bit, like I haven't touched on it yet, but, but the way he keeps saying this isn't in my blood, this isn't me, this experience that I'm going through right now isn't my identity. It's not in my blood, it's not in my DNA. I am gonna get through this, I'm a fighter. There's hope, this will not define who I am. Love it. it is in Flowers were going around him. That's the hope. That has he kind of gone through seasons? Because there's flowers. I think there was was there rain and snow earlier. I'm not sure about the bricks and that falling down. That's not a season, luckily. Okay, I think we're done. What a great song, poppy, catchy but with a really cool message with it. You know, everyone has this in them. Everyone has this capability to get through their experiences. It might not feel like it at times, and often it takes more than grit and determination. It takes support from others, but everyone has the capacity to get through those hard times. Remember that, please. Don't give up, don't quit, keep going. Reach out to others if you need to. That is quite often the hardest step. You know, that first step, like pushing a car, all the energy and force goes into that first initial push. But then as you gain the momentum, as that car starts moving, subsequent steps get easier and easier. Okay, you've got this. That's me for this one. I hope you liked it. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.